Sometimes in a classroom, a scientific gathering, or a family gathering, a question is raised that makes everyone present think. This thought may be temporary and will soon be broken by one of the people present in that group by giving a logical answer. And sometimes, it may continue for a long time and even cause a gap in our worldview and way of thinking. One of these topics that is not easy to answer is about God. What is his nature, and what can he do? In this video, we address one of the most basic questions. It is said that God is powerful, and his ability is infinite. So can God create someone like himself? So why didn't he do this? If he can't, then how can we believe that God is able? Or is it said that God can create a mountain that he is not able to move? If he cannot have such a creation, then he is not capable. And if he can create a mountain that he is not able to move, it can still be concluded that God is not capable and powerful. What is the answer to these questions? How can you get a correct and logical conclusion from such a contradiction? Have you ever come across these contradictions? Stay with us. There is knowledge in the world that is very difficult for ordinary people to access. This is because, nowadays, most people grow up in a specific educational system and under a single upbringing. In this channel, we try to talk about knowledge that is not usually discussed in the educational system and normal books. Hidden secrets that sometimes you have to read ancient books and forbidden knowledge to find them. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. One of the attributes of God that has always been a source of wonder and mystery for us is his infinity in all fields. That God is eternal existence and will never be properly analyzed in our minds. According to new physics data, our universe came into existence 13.7 billion years ago from the Big Bang. The explosion that cosmologists believe caused the creation of not only the universe and all the matter and energy in it. It also created time. It means that there was no time before this explosion. Thinking about a time when time has not yet been created is an impossible and fundamentally strange thing for us as human beings. Because we always use time adverbs in our conversations. We live by time and even think by time. Adverbs like yesterday, today, before, and after all refer to time. But when the time has not yet come into being, these adverbs lose their use easily. It means that we cannot ask what existed before the world. Because the word before itself is an adverb and relates to the time when time was created at all. We can extend this issue to other issues with a little more thought. It means to measure the weakness of our own human mind by thinking about these limits. For example, our human mind can't deal with the infinite size or the infinite itself. This limitlessness is as strange and unknown to us as it is scary. But back to our question, if God has unlimited ability, can he create another God like himself? God, if created, will be eternal and will not be destroyed. Before answering this question, we must know that the history of this question and these types of questions go back thousands of years. When humanity, at least the humanity known to us, was laying the first bricks of logic and philosophy. Many forms of this question have been raised, for example, can God create a mountain that he cannot move? Can God create something that he cannot destroy? Can God fit the world in an egg if the world does not get smaller and the size of the egg does not change? The questions that were raised were examples of dozens of similar forms, all of which end in a specific contradiction. Soon we will understand that by answering one of them, it is as if we have answered all of them and the problem can be solved. 
First of all, we must examine all kinds of impossibilities from the point of view of logic. Logic believes that impossibilities are divided into two categories, rational impossibility and normal impossibility. The rational impossibility itself is composed of two categories, inherent and accidental. Maybe it's getting a little confusing, but with a few examples, it will soon become clear. Inherent impossible, as its name suggests, refers to things that are inherently doable and not possible at all. Like the sum of two contradictory things. For example, shadow and light or day and night. Accidental impossibilities are related to things that require the occurrence of an impossible event. For example, unexplained events can be excluded from this category. But what are normal impossibilities? In fact, these kinds of events are apparently impossible. That is, according to the laws of physics, or rather, according to the usual and known laws, it is not possible for them to happen. Like teleport. It can be said that the extraordinary works done by the spiritual masters or the gifted people and even the miracles of the prophets and messengers of God are of the same kind. It means they are from the ordinary impossibilities. That is, they are not actually impossible. For example, the healing and treatment of a disease without special medicine or the splitting of the sea could have happened entirely according to scientific laws that we are not aware of. But what is the answer to our question? The answer here is that God's power and basically any power of anyone and anything belongs to possible events. Things that are part of the category of impossible are basically out of the circle of power. So, in answer to our main question, we should say. First, no matter how much or little, whether finite or infinite, power is related to possible things, not impossible things. The assumption of the creation of another God who is completely similar to the one God and has the attributes of being absolute, eternal, rich, and needless, and any other kind of infinity, is nothing but inherent impossibilities. Because if God created himself and is a creature of another God, he can no longer be absolute and eternal, he is no longer needless and even unique. This shows the contradiction and impossibility of this event. Secondly, from a logical point of view, creating another God with all the attributes of God is a futile thing. According to logic, we know that God does not do things in vain, and doing things in vain shows imperfection. So such a thing cannot be done by God. In this video, we examine one of the basic questions of logic that has been asked in various forms for thousands of years, and we saw that this question in itself carries a big contradiction that takes it out of the circle of logic and something that is illogical, so it is not worth checking. What is your opinion about this?